Slope meters, grading old school. In this video, I'm going to talk about slope meters, how to calibrate them, when they are useful, and when they are not so useful. When I am grading, I probably look up my slope meter a hundred times a day, so I must find it pretty useful. Standard General is investing heavily in the, the latest automated grading systems. When I create these videos, I am obviously not using automated systems. But if you are, I hope that you can still learn something from these videos. To understand grading completely, you still need to know how to achieve it without the automation. In this video, I talk about how many variables come into play when you are trying to achieve grade. In my opinion, that is the main reason that automated grading systems struggle to achieve the promises made in their sales brochure. Of course, as time goes on, automated grading systems will get better and better, but you still need to know the basics. I hope you enjoy this upcoming video. It's basically me talking to myself about slope meters. This trail should be 3%. It's made out of, uh, we built it out of, it's stabilized underneath the structure is stabilized clay. And it's also uh, 300. 300 millimeters of, of 63, 63 mil. So that's that reclaimed, reclaimed uh, concrete. So it's very solid, this trail. Uh, but it, mostly what I wanted to talk about is uh, holding a percentage on your slope meter. Uh, I wanted to show this because I wanted to show my slope meter as I'm, as I'm driving down it. And I wanted to talk about the slope meters and when they can be useful and when they can be not so useful. Uh, you notice that I'm driving quite slow. And the reason I'm driving quite slow while I'm looking at this slope meter is because if you're taking these sharp corners, like even at a few kilometers an hour, or even in third or fourth gear, uh, the slope meter would get very much distorted by the centrifugal force of you turning the corner. Just the fact that you're turning the corner makes the slope meter go off to the side and it distorts the, the true uh, it distorts the, uh, the true accuracy of it. The bubble. Yeah bubble will go off to the side because because you're turning your corner if you turn the corner fast then amazingly you don't have to go very fast if you're just going like a few kilometers an hour and you you stop you'll see the slope meter drop back and uh, I'm gonna give you that example right now I'm gonna give you the example of doing that I'm gonna put some back up I'll, I'll, I'll create some uh, momentum here a little bit now watch this. I'm gonna just go in. I'm just gonna go in fourth gear here. I'm just gonna go like not even 10 kilometers an hour. Now there is my slope meter sitting on basically three percent, or right now it's sitting exactly on two. But watch me when I take this corner. At a little bit of speed. It goes way over to 8% and then I stop and it goes back. Well, it's sitting at zero right now. But, uh, now we're back to two, back to, uh, but anyway, keep that in mind when you're using your slope meter. Keep it in mind that sometimes they're useful and sometimes you're 
better off not even looking at them. Also, when you're, you know, when you're, uh, when you're cutting, if you're cutting on something hard, if you're cutting on a hard surface, forget about you using, looking at your slope meter. It'll just screw you up more than anything because the fact that you're bearing down on the hard surface pushes, you know, it, it distorts your tires. So it pushes down on one side of your grader and up on the other and uh, you can't rely on your slope meter when you're cutting on a hard surface because it'll, it'll, uh, it just, it, it uh, it's too distorted. The measurement is distorted because it, your tires are your tires are distorted when you're when you're cutting on a hard surface at least. So a slope meter can be very useful, but be careful how you use it. Here is another scenario where your slope meter is not very useful. A lot of grader operators struggle with building these mono berms and getting the percentage on top correct. The top percentage on these mono berms should be 2% toward the road. And years ago I used to try to I used to try to make them wide enough so I could get both tires on them so you could look at your slope meter but I kind of gave up on that idea and I don't even look at my slope meter when I'm doing these. Because you see, one wheel is up, the other wheel is down. And right now, my slope meter would probably read about 6%, so there's no point of even looking at it. After a while, you come to, uh, you can just kind of uh, guesstimate that 2%. It works better than using your slope meter. So I just, that's what I do in the last several years is I don't even look at it when I'm, when I'm working on these berms. I've just gotten to uh, know the feel of, know the look of that, what that 2% looks like and I can, I can guess it pretty close. I see right now where my wheels are, like I say, my slope meter would probably read, who knows, 6% probably. And yet the top of the berm is approximately 2%. So it's just another, another place where uh, slope meters are not so useful. I wanted to talk about uh, calibrating your slope meter. So uh, the way you do it, if you want to check to see if your slope meter is set right, you see mine's just got a uh, ready rod on both sides of it there and I can, I can adjust it by screwing the threads up and down if I want to. I haven't adjusted it for a few years because my tires are nice and constant air pressure and I don't, it's never really changed. So I haven't calibrated it for a long time and I, I notice that it's quite accurate. But this is how you calibrate it. Like any other level, it's the same way as you'd calibrate a level. You stop. You have your tires in a certain spot, and you see right now I'm reading a uh, 3%. But, and now I'm going to turn my grader around. Right now I'm facing north. I'm going to turn my grader around to face south, but I'll park in exactly the same spot. And it should be 3% to the other side. And if you're 3% one way and you turn around, and you're 3% the other way, or whatever percentage it is, it doesn't have to be 3%, then you'll know that your slope meter is calibrated. It's good. That's how you calibrate it. It's just like any other level. You To calibrate a level, when you set it down on a certain surface and, and uh, it's, reading, it's reading a certain level, you flip it and it should read the exact uh, same uh, level to the other side though. Now here's my tracks. I'm sitting right here. Now I'm pointing to the south. It's sitting on about three as I was parked about right here, I think. Haley, do you want to go for coffee? If you're truly calibrating this, you should go out and mark it yeah, with, sure. with some paint or, the bathroom and then I will. or set a rock set a rock down or 
something so that you know exactly where you've parked. So uh, that's how you calibrate your that's how you calibrate your slope meter. To create these videos, I am using footage that I shot on the job site last summer. If you find these videos helpful or interesting, please like and subscribe. If you have some input, please leave a comment below.